you and Mary were still the best of friends. But Mary had assumed greater importance to you. You came to depend upon her more and more in your schoolwork, although you scarcely realized it. It wasn't that Mary was any smarter than you were. It was just, well, that she seemed to find more time to study. And you were student council representative and a very busy fellow. Okay, that finishes the problems. Now how about our history? You haven't done your history lesson either? Well, gosh, Mary, I can't do everything. I have two council meetings this week. I just don't have time to study. Well, here are the answers to the history lesson. But I think you're going to have trouble when we have tests and all these things. What are you going to do about the big test tomorrow? Oh, I'll get by all right. If I have trouble, you'll help me again, won't you? And that's how it was. Gradually, Mary had become your partner, although as time went on, she seemed less willing to do your work for you. Sometimes, Mary looked at you almost as Miss Granby had. Well, so long, Mary. Thanks a lot for your help. Yes, thanks a lot for your help, Mary. Whether you intended to help him or not, it was clear John depended on you. Didn't you begin to wonder what you were letting yourself in for? Take the next day, for instance, the day of the test. What's the answer to number nine? You gotta help me. What's the answer to number nine? John, bring it up here, please. I'm afraid I'll have to give you both zero on the test. And both of you are to report to me after school, please. So you were caught, John. You were exposed in front of the class. And what's more, Mary was involved too. Mary, who was only trying to help. And then what happened? Your classmates seemed to treat you a little coldly. Perhaps it was because they had studied and worked hard for their grades. Maybe they felt that your cheating gave you an unfair advantage. And their thoughts about you were reflected in another way. Hey, what's up? Meeting of the student council. That's funny. My name isn't on there. I'm on the student council. I don't think you'd want to come to this meeting. It's about you. Me? That's what I hear. Say, would you mind calling me after the meeting's over and let me know how it comes out? No, I wouldn't mind. No, I don't say that what John did was right, but I do think we ought to give him another chance. You mean you think we ought to let him go on being in the student council? I think we should. I don't. You've got to admit he's a good representative. That's right, but I don't think anyone that cheats should hold an office. That's right, I think we should elect a new representative. Well, no, Jimmy, All right, wait a minute. Wait a minute, we won't get anywhere by all talking at once. Are we ready to take a vote now? All in favor of giving John another chance, hold up your hand. All who think we should elect a new student council representative, hold up your hand. Well, I guess most of us feel the same way about it. Who's going to tell John? I'll tell him. I said I'd call him when the meeting was over. I'll call him as soon as I get home. John, I guess you know why I'm calling. We had that meeting about you a little while ago. They decided to elect a new student council representative. I'm sorry, Johnny, but I guess you know why. Yes, John knew why it was. He'd been caught in a trap of his own making and had involved his friends too. He now found himself looked down on by friends and classmates. But did John really intend to be dishonest? Should Mary share any of the blame? Was it fair for John to use Mary as he did? And what about his classmates? Did John's cheating hurt them in any way? 
should they have given him another chance what do you think